What's going on guys? Jay Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to episode number 18 of the Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode. Last episode, we made a couple of moves to kind of push us to where we are now, which also pushed us to be the number one team in the NHL. Uh, it's not a clear favorite. We do have some teams within a couple points of us, but for right now, we are sitting at the top of the NHL. Patrick Kane, Dylan Strome, the dynamic duo that we've had for a while now, have just kept us like kept us rolling, and they've just been absolutely dominating. Uh, they've been fighting back and forth to see who's going to lead the team in points. Uh, but today we got the start of February. I guess we're already a little bit into it from last episode. But we had the trade deadline, and then we're going to go up to the end of the year and kind of get ourselves playoff ready. And uh, as of right now, we sit at 50 contracts, so we don't really need to get anyone. We have six goalies, which is something I usually do uh, at the deadline, but this time we got it a little bit beforehand, and we are ready to make the playoff push. And once the trade deadline goes by, as you guys remember, we turn on injuries, and uh, we leave on injuries until the rest of the playoffs end. So I don't have any trades in mind, but if there's always uh, an offer, we'll obviously look at it. But let's start it off strong here. Face off against Vegas, and they're struggling recently with uh, with their game. So let, we got a big one against them. And uh, like I said, as long as we kind of maintain our momentum, maintain the winning streak, and uh, you know, basically go more than 500, we are, we're in the playoffs, and you know, we're just in a very very good spot. Now I know, you know, it's not official that we're in the playoffs yet, but 40, 14, and four. It's a pretty darn good record, if you ask me. And then even Rockford down there, 31, 14, and 5 for them. Uh, looks like they're going to be playoff bound if, as long as they keep playing the way that they're playing. Uh, we just went on a five-game win streak, or was that it's six games? All right, I'll take it. So a six-game win streak to start off the episode. You love to see that. What else do we got here? So we're facing off against St. Louis. They're not doing too well. We get the win there. So February's been a pretty decent month after uh, the 4th and 5th, after February 4th and 5th where we lost those games. And uh, and then once we faced Anaheim, we lost to them. But hey, that's a great month. We just kept it rolling. Uh, I don't know what the record was overall, but I would guess one of them is in the lead. Yep, there they are. Strom right on top there. We have now have 92 points. Uh, the next closest team has 85, so it looks like we're still on top of the NHL. Uh, like I said, I don't have any other trades I wanted to make, but uh, so we'll just go day by day here and uh, and see if anything comes calling. Trade block is anything even on there for us? I guess McCown. We can, we'll just take him off. Um, yeah, I can't see if anything we really need for for the playoff run. I mean, we got good depth. Uh, we have our six goalies. And uh, and we're in a in a solid spot right now. So I don't have any trades I wanted to make. So there we go. Get past the deadline. Let's go turn on injuries and get back and make the push for the Stanley Cup. Here we go. 96. I think I just saw points rolling into after the trade deadline. Let's keep it going. Keep the momentum. We got what a month and a half ish left. So yeah, we have March and then so like yeah about yeah month and a half ish. So uh, let's go right to it. Let's just uh, get up to the, uh, the end of the season and uh, and let's prepare for the playoffs and see who's going to be our first round opponent this year. Uh, big win versus Dallas. That's good. Uh, I don't know how the uh, the playoff picture is kind of kind of wrapping up. Brandon Saad out with an MCL sprain should be out until about April eighth. I think that's right at the start of the playoffs. So uh, we should get him right back to the playoffs. So that's good. Um, I don't think we have anyone up here. Yeah, we don't. So we'll have to uh, to call up somebody. So uh, I guess we have to to make the roster move first, and then uh, and then get the lines. So who's kind of most deserving down there? Uh, I guess we will find out uh, forwards. All right. So uh, I'm gonna go through the players and uh, find the most uh, you know qualified candidate to come up and produce, and then uh, we'll fix the lines, and then we'll get right back into the playoff push. All right. Here we are back in. So we called up Brandon Geniak. He had I believe 60 points if not 60 plus points down there and 59 i think it was games uh so he comes in fills in the fourth line role uh there's two guys that were actually bad and forth hit uh brandon Geniak and uh marion sudanich uh, were both uh you know similar kind of points similar numbers all around uh but we made the decision with uh Geniak and uh, and left sudanich down there we had to send yaros and ward down our extra defenseman and goaltender down uh for salary cap i couldn't actually call anyone up 
uh, until that happened. But um, let's fix the AHL lines once again and then uh, and then continue on. All right, we're up to 52 wins. As soon as I come back here, we got another injury. So we'll just do this one live and, uh, and re-put this guy in the lineup. This guy's actually been tearing it up. I don't remember how we got this guy, but... Uh, we got this guy this year, and he had, well, his stats before looked a lot more impressive, but he played 37 games and had, um, what was it, 17 points or something like that in those 13, or 39 games, so he was absolutely tearing it up, uh, now he's, you know, was injured, and maybe that's gonna set him back a little bit, I'm not sure, but, uh, either way, both of our teams are in a great spot, we're just gonna replace the player, because I don't really feel like dealing with that again, uh, but 52 wins, 18 losses, and 5 extra time losses, Rockford's playing well. We got another injury in the AHL. Let's fix that again and get back to it. All right, we're right back at it. We got a couple of uh, Eastern Conference teams here in a row. Uh, Brandon Saad, I would love to have him back, but you know, coming off that injury, we're just gonna let him sit, uh, maybe till like the last game, and uh, and kind of put him back in just to kind of make sure he's kind of fully ready to go for the playoffs. So we'll we'll go right before the Minnesota game. And, uh, and put him in there. It looks like he just recovered from his injury anyway. Uh, but right now, 56, 19, and 6. We're in a great spot. Uh, we'll get to all the standings and stats in a minute. But uh, let's put, G uh, not Giniac, let's um, put Sod in the lineup and see what we can do in the last game of the season. And then we'll be ready to prep for the playoffs as uh, hopefully we can avoid the Dallas Stars and go a lot farther than usual. All right, we're at our last game of the regular season. Let's just simulate right through it by advancing the day. And uh, we'll get all the injuries fixed in a minute. And we end the season on a win. We clinched, is it the league too? We clinched the league with 120 points. That's crazy. So we definitely have the number one seed going in. Uh, but let's start right here at the player stats. Team leader in points once again goes to Patrick Kane. 86 points uh only one behind him dylan strome uh we put debrinkak up on that line to see what he could do up there and uh he performed really well 65 points great year by him uh duchene 64 points solani another solid year i think what was his first year he had what 34 okay so yeah he's coming into his own right there on the second line it sucks that we can't put him on the first line we could i mean i could try that line maybe next year in preseason of uh, Solani, Strom, and Kane, just to kind of see how that line would work. Uh, then maybe we could put Dabrinkak up on the second line with maybe Koivu and Duchesne. That'd be a really solid lineup, uh, but that's all for next year. Michael McLeod, 56 points on the third line. That's pretty incredible. I was not expecting that. Uh, T Taves and um, Saad, good years as well. Uh, Com for 28 points, fourth line, playing well. Uh, three game-winning goals I see over there. Uh, and then Tatar and Froelich did fine. Uh, minus two, a couple of guys were minus here and there. I don't really mind that that much. Uh, Koivu, if we could kind of keep it out of the box a little bit, that'd be kind of wonderful. Because uh, he's kind of sitting on top by a, by oh, basically double, exactly double. So, hmm. All right, so if we can keep him out of the box a little bit, that would be kind of great. Our power play was on fire. 15 power play goals for Patrick Kane. Uh, let's go check on our defense now. Boquist, of course, our number one guy now. 55 points. He leads the way. Fowler right behind him, 32 points. That's a great year from him. Miller, 20 points. That's solid. Ulevi, 15 points. Keith, uh, 14 points. Severson, like, that's exactly what we want. They're all playing well. Their plus minus is good. Uh, low penalty minutes. And uh, our power play guys are getting it done. And uh, that's just a solid effort all around from our defense, from our forwards. And uh, this is exactly what we wanted right here. When we, when we you know, kind of made some moves to get Devin Dubnik to offer him that one-year contract, this is exactly what we wanted. If he comes out and performs, it's great. If he doesn't come and perform, we trade him away. We get that, you know, free kind of pick or prospect or whatever back. And then Saros, as long as he played well as a backup role this year, hopefully he can learn something and he'll grow for even more next year. And uh, even if Dominic doesn't return to us, we'll still have Yaro, or not Yaros, Saros there as uh, a solid starter. Because even Saros, 
he's been good since we've had him. I mean, you just look at the numbers. He's been good for us. So uh, the fact that we could bring in a guy like Dubnik and him to perform this well, you just it's great. It's so, it was such a good decision to uh, to make that happen. Six shutouts uh, for Dubnik. That's incredible. Looking down on uh, our goaltenders in the AHL, Hullet and Gravel both played great. Cam Ward, who we got later in the season, uh, he was in the AHL at the time, so his numbers look great, of course. Uh, then we'll take a quick look through the defense. Uh, a couple of guys really standing out. Uh, then we put in uh, the guys that we had to send down just to get them some playing time, get them back in form. Uh, but a couple of guys really standing out down there. And uh, and there you see it, Studenich, 72 points. It was a battle between him and Zinyak. And, uh, you know, Zinyak did actually play really well. I don't think I even mentioned that early on in the video. He put up 10 points while he was up here. 10 points. He had two, he had two power play goals. Or points, that is. So he played really well this year. So uh, he's going to want to make a jump for next year. So if we don't re-sign Tatar or um, who's the other guy? Froelich, uh, we might have a spot for him. So you never know. But, um, but yeah, Rockford played great. We played great. We secured the number one seed in the NHL. We'll go through the standings real quick. And uh, that's the Central Division. But uh, entire league, we should be on top. There we are. 120 points. Final record of 57, 19, and 6. Uh, <laughs> what do I even say to that? That's just an incredible year all around. Uh, let's go right through it. Goals for, so we're number one. Goals for, we're on top. Goals against, uh, we're right there. We're right at the bottom, tied for second to least. Uh, goals against per game. Like I said, it didn't look at goals for per game, but we're probably at number one. There we go. Goals against per game. We're number or tied for number uh, two overall. Power play goals. Uh, yeah, we're on top there. Uh, total power plays. So it looks like we're drawing a lot of penalties as well. Power play percentage. Uh, what's that top tied for top three I'll take that we only had one short-handed goal against you'll love to see that power play goals against so all right that leads to good things power uh, penalty kill top four I should just say top five we had some power uh, short-handed goals and then you look at the records speak for themselves 28 10 and 3 at home 29 9 and 3 away in our last 10 it's been great uh, all around, just great year. Um, if we were to kind of hope for a finalist, it'd be Washington, just to kind of you know get the best of uh, both worlds there. And uh, you know, I guess let's go see uh, what the playoff bracket looks like. So the first round, we're gonna end up facing off against the Colorado Avalanche. But as promised, let's go take a look at the playoff bracket. So as you can see on your screen now, we got the playoff tree. And it looks like Dallas, once again, makes the playoffs. So uh, we do have a chance to meet up with them in the second round. But we have Dallas, Winnipeg. We have uh, Chicago and uh, Colorado. Arizona, Calgary, Vancouver, and Nashville. Uh, over on the eastern side, we have Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, Washington, Carolina, Boston, Toronto, and Tampa Bay, Ottawa. I'm really liking those Eastern Conference storylines over there. <laughs> that's pretty crazy. I mean, uh, what was it? Boston, Toronto was what the battle of the what was it the second round or the first round? One of the two. Uh, Washington, Carolina, that was a battle of the second round. I know uh, Philly didn't make it this year, but Pittsburgh and Philly have a long history there. Uh, and then I don't believe the AHL playoff or regular season is done yet, so we can't take a look at that. Uh, but like usual, let's uh, let's go scout our opponent here in uh, in Colorado. So I think this is actually the first time we're facing them, if I'm not mistaken. But let's go take a look. Uh, okay, so they still got the top line. These guys got Kako. Uh, all right, so uh, Tyson Jost there. All right, so they're very, very top heavy. Uh, but they do have um, a more of a defensive bottom six. So, all right. Uh, second line's kind of weak though. They, do they? I wanna, we're gonna check injuries here in a second, but defense. I don't want to say weak as well. Uh, obviously, we started after the uh, the roster update, so they don't have Kale McCarr. But um, okay, so they have a good first line, and then they have Gerard, and after that, it kind of goes downhill a little bit. Uh, goaltenders. Okay, so they have Varlamov, 87 overall. What did uh, what did he go this year? Uh, third, we want. Okay, so he just went positive a little bit. What did they get carried by their? 
Actually, this would be the eighth seed, right? Yeah, so, all right. So they didn't play that great this year. And then they don't have any, like, create... Oh, I guess they have 14. Uh, all right, so... I'm expecting to beat them, obviously. Uh, first line, solid. First line defense is solid. Uh, and then the goaltender is a good overall, but he didn't really play that great this year. Uh, and then, yeah. So, I mean, if I was them, I'd honestly maybe put Landis Gog on the second line and then put whoever up there just to kind of balance it out a little bit. But, hey, whatever they want to do, they got their top line. Obviously, we know all these players are very good. So, uh... Obviously, we're not going to underestimate them, but we're going to be ready for them in the first round of the playoffs, as that's going to be it for today, guys. Episode number 18 is now done and dusted. Uh, we're ready for the playoffs. First round versus Colorado. I'm excited. Uh, I feel like this is the year. We can go super far, and uh, obviously, we have to get past Dallas uh, in the second round if they make it there, and uh, if Winnipeg beats them, that'd be kind of huge, because then we don't have to face off against them and uh, our kryptonite would be eliminated from the playoffs. But like I said, guys, that is it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit the like button down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And as always, guys, we'll see you next time.